so there are a couple of options um, for what I can do because I can't decide what I want to do, so I'll let y'all decide um, by round of applause that I will arbitrarily decide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, anyone's welcome to applause me or it. Um, so I have, uh, I have uh, the collection here, and I have a short story in there that I like and uh, was edited and... Um, makes sense and it's really helpful to read. Um, and then I have an uh, excerpt from the manuscript for my novel that I'm uh, writing right now that is 100% not edited at all. And this will definitely be like the second time. Okay, hold on
The one and only corridor in the house separated the two bedrooms. Rupert had taken mine after I left for college, and he graciously maintained it, even going so far as to meticulously recreate the creases in the bedspread I'd left on my last visit. <laughs> Each time I returned, he abdicated my bed without discussion or complaint, and in this way, at least, I found him endearing. <laughs> Where he slept while I was home, or why he never dusted, I cannot say. <laughs> I dropped my suitcase heavily on the bed and flung myself down beside it. My shoes slammed loudly into the wall before I realized I'd taken them off. They were quickly joined by my cargo shorts and my t-shirt. I lay on my back in my underwear, closed my eyes, and tried to put the ordeal of my journey behind me. I could still taste the egg sandwich I'd choked down for breakfast the day before. Rupert's animated fawning was the inevitable cost of a decent meal, but a man can only suffer so many indignities without pause. I snatched a towel from the hook on the back of the door and snuck into the bathroom to shower. Father and Rupert whispered conspiratorially in the kitchen. No doubt they planned to ambush me with the accusations of ingratitude after my icy ride home with Father. I would plan my rebuttal as I watch, washed off the psychic residue of America's traveling failures. We just took a bus ride. Um, an hour later, I emerged, haloed in steam and hungry for a hot meal and an apology. I mentally enumerated the injustices I'd faced on my journey, rating them by severity and degree of transphobia. I didn't want to recount the entire litany, but I would if they were unwilling to concede the righteousness of my grievances. The promise of vindication had already begun to buoy my, my morale. I changed quickly and walked out to the dining room where Father sat reading an Us Weekly, a habit he'd maintained for years and one which I was forbidden from commenting on. <laughs> Father had a lifelong interest in clothes, or, as he mortifyingly described it, a passion for fashion. <laughs> He'd made costumes for mu musicals throughout high school and college, and now worked as a tailor, designing handsome suits for young men and ponderous women in with crew cuts. It was a chromatically monotonous world of grays, navies, and browns. Father bedecked his shop in rainbow-colored bric-a-brac, perhaps to countervail against the somber tones of the job. <laughs> there was a trimming of flags out front and ribbons wrapped around every post. Even the pens at the counter were gross squirreled colors. Were I shopping for a suit, such, a campy, such campy trappings would steer me away from any establishment. Yet father never wanted for clients. In fact, they flocked to him. I suppose a craftsman reputation, a craftsman's reputation may be more compelling than his window dressing. <sighs> Rupert had prepared a celebratory sampling of ethnic staples, most of which I recognized from previous encounters. There was a steaming pot of reddish rice with bits of tomato and carrots, soupy beans, and a tray of broiled chicken dangerously encrusted with spices. Every dish was enshrouded in the rich, heady aroma of generous seasoning. At the center of the table sat a basket of freshly cut flowers from Rupert's backyard garden. Clearly, he wanted the evening to be special. Doesn't this look wonderful, I said, taking my seat. Rupert beamed at me proudly. Didn't cut any corners by the look of it. No, sir. No expense spared. I hope the sarcasm was discernible. I had no intention of paying this man an actual compliment. <laughs> that is quite enough, Hans. Father said, <laughs> I was taken aback by his tone. Something about it was uncharacteristically forbidding. He'd fixed me with a critical eye, and his posture was tense and brooding. Rupert anxiously finished setting the table and took his seat at the far end. Now, Charles, he said with forced levity, I'm sure Hans didn't mean anything by it. He was slopping beans onto his plate and smiling broadly. I always resented Rupert's attempts to play peacekeeper. He had an unhealthy aversion to conflict that I found unbearably grating. <laughs> Father would not take his eyes off me as he stuffed a forkful of rice into his mouth and grumbled grumpily. Is, I, I'm surprised I was able to say that. <laughs> For the first time, I worried that I wouldn't get the apology I so deeply deserved. It was an unsettling prospect. <laughs> Actually, I did. I mumbled, feeling petulant but indecisive. I thought that my grievances were self-evidently justified. If Father was planning to contest them, I'd need more time to develop a supporting argument. I wasn't as prepared to fight as I thought. Father slammed his fork to the table, sending a terrible clatter through the air and shattering my concentration. Rupert and I both jumped in our seats. He commanded our attention, and he sat with it for an agonizingly long moment of stunning silence. 
Even the hum of the ceiling fan's motor seemed to have been squelched. Hans, he said at last, I'm sorry for getting upset, but we need to talk. He seemed dangerously calm after his outburst. I was not accustomed to father behaving with such volatility, and I wondered briefly what he would look like with a leather jacket and a motorcycle. <laughs> I understand that you're upset about having to take the bus. You're used to a certain level of comfort, and I appreciate that. He paused to wipe his mouth with his napkin. I was still too shocked to respond. But, like it or not, things are going to change. His voice was resolute. He sighed heavily, letting the gravity of what he was saying settle in. I realized that he'd been practicing for this conversation. Whatever he was planning to say, he'd known he would say it for some time. <laughs> My anger, which had near, been nearly stunned out of me, recovered and began to rise again. I realized I was being set up. <laughs> Charles, Rupert cut in urgently, we agreed not to talk about this until after dinner. So, the trap had sprung too soon. <laughs> I was not supposed to be ambushed until I'd been properly lulled into believing I was safe. How long had they been planning this? My mind was reeling. I pushed my plate away, suddenly afraid my meal had been drugged. <laughs> no, no, why stay the execution if you don't intend to pardon, I cried. Leaping from my seat, let's talk now! I'm still uncertain of the exact nature of this attack, but I could swing my rage like a cudgel until it hit something appropriate. <laughs> Hans, please, Rupert pleaded desperately. I held up a hand to silence him. He had no business in this inner seat, but he had no business interceding. I don't know about how things work where you're from, but in this country, a conversation between a man and his father is private. He stopped. <laughs> You know for a fact that I'm from Tallahassee. <laughs> Whatever that is, I have <laughs> Enough, Father, Father Bello. I've had it with your attitude, Hans. You demand so much respect and you give so little. His face was red with fury. For the first time in my life, I was afraid of him. You don't have to like the fact that Rupert and I are together, but God damn it, you're going to have to accept it. Charles, breathe, Rupert said soothingly. He'd come around the table to Father's side and was now rubbing his arm. Remember what Dr. Alvarez said, stay on topic, boundaries. <laughs> father, was, father was shaking. He breathed through his nostrils slowly, intentionally. Dr. Who? I cried. Is this some kind of ex-gay conversion quackery? I puffed out my chest. I do not consent. I am a proud transgender man and there's nothing you can do to change that. <laughs> Yes, we know. <laughs> With an uncongenial roll of his eyes, we're all very proud. <laughs> his tone startled me. There was something unprecedentedly dismissive about it. <laughs> Normally, Rupert was wilting, even feminine. I'd never expected him capable of such assertive hostility. Whatever debacle was unfolding, it had brought Father nearly to tears and an elicited an unforeseen paternalism from Rupert. He gestured to the tear I'd sprung from moments earlier. Please, Hans, sit back down. Grudgingly, guardedly, I did it as, as he asked. I still had no idea what we were fighting about. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert patted, patted Father tenderly on the back. Charles? Father had finally begun to compose himself. The ruddiness of his rays diminished slowly into his usual pallor. His hands were folded together under his chin, and he was staring fixedly at the bowl of flowers at the center of the table. He continued to breathe with measured intention. Hans, he said at last, Rupert and I are retiring. Don't you have to have a job before you can retire? I sniped, looking directly at Rupert. I hadn't really meant to say it out loud. <laughs> Father pounded his fist on the table, sending the cutlery clattering into the air. I am begging you to stop, Hans. I could see that he was getting upset again. For a man who never displayed any anger before, he certainly seemed to be having a hard time managing it. We are retiring. I'm not getting any younger, and we want to be able to enjoy the time we have left. He finally raised his eyes to mine. Now, as you've pointed out many times, most of the people in this town disapprove of our relationship. We can't stay here. We deserve to live somewhere where we can be happy. He held my gaze, perhaps in his anticipating encouragement or approval. In fact, I was busy wondering what any of this had to do with me. <laughs> he went on. 
We're moving to Key West. It's the best thing for both of us. It's not going to be possible, but it's not going to be possible without some serious budgeting. We're selling the house, the shop, and he paused and cringed like a man about to be struck. We can't pay for your apartment anymore. The room froze. What? I asked, waiting for the feeling of my heartbeat to return. We won't be able to afford the rent once we move. I'm sorry, but we just can't make it work. They were both stark still and expectant. Doubtlessly, they expected a reaction, and I did not disappoint. <laughs> you mean I'm going to be homeless so the two of you can lounge around on a beach together until you die? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> muttered Rupert under his breath as he rubbed the bridge of his nose between his fingers. Student housing, Father said flatly. You're moving into the dorms. Thank you. <laughs>